Welcome back, and today we're looking at the Jack Wolf Knife Vampire Jack V2. This is the original version, and there's some upgrades and some differences between the two. We'll discuss those. Sorry it took me a little longer to get my review out. I've been very sick the last uh, almost week. I've been having to recycle content, my rainy day backlog videos. So even though y'all had stuff to watch, I I've been out this is his first re-release, but like I said, he did change some things between the two. If you have both, you got something a little bit different. Comes in five different variations. The one you see here with the Nebula Fat Carbon and the Belt Satin Blade. You can also get it with a Jig Titanium Handle with a Hand Satin Blade. That looks pretty darn nice. You can get it with Dark Matter Red Fat Carbon Covers with a Black DLC Blade tie and hardware. You can get it with a purple haze fat carbon with a belt satin blade. That was probably my second favorite. And last you can get it with a smooth titanium scales with black DLC on the entire knife. So a murdered out version. Now if you stick around to the end of the video I'm going to give you my top five favorite Jack Wolf knives at this point. The Vampire Jack comes in at 6.9 inches long with a 3 inch blade of CPM S90V steel at 60 to 61 HRC. That's the first difference between the two. This one came in Bowler M390 and I was really excited to see him make the change to S90V because I find it to be an excellent performer and especially on a slip joint where you're looking for mainly edge retention, you're not trying to beat on it. The blade stock thickness is coming in at 0.12 inches and you have a full height hollow grind that comes down to around 12 to 13 thousandths behind the edge. So it should be very, very slicey. You have a nice top swedge that comes down, thinning out that tip a little bit for piercing. And this is going to be a very versatile blade shape because that tip sits just barely above the center line of the pivot. So I can still get my tip down on the things to do drag cuts, detail cuts, and stuff like that. Has a nice belt satin finish on it. Half crescent nail nick on the show skit on the show side. Another change on the V2, he extended the sharpening choil, uh, as you can see there, giving you more sharpening light before it starts to widen up back here. Now I think it's time to do a little cutting. My knife came with a pretty good edge out of box and this was the first time that I was actually able to test the S90V uh, over the M390 with the same exact model. So it was kind of cool, kind of interesting. Uh, I decided to throw two more pieces of cardboard at it because it is S90V. And uh, one thing that I have found though after uh, you know sharpening these up after the testing is that the edge retention jumps up exponentially after your first, second, and third sharpening. Um, you'd be surprised, and that's the case a lot of times with production uh, not production sharpened knives, because uh, a lot of times we do them on belt sharpeners and it kind of fatigues that apex of the edge, causing it not to have the edge retention it should. But this thing is blasting through the cardboard. I, I knew it already would because of uh, that deep hollow grind like on the original one. And it's just even nicer whenever you have, um, when you have the S90V steel as well. Um, I found that for me, I like a nice toothy edge. So 600 grit stropped with some three micron and one micron uh, gunny juice. Gives it the very aggressive toothy edge. Here we're testing the Ergos and I already knew the Ergos were going to be good because the first one was good. At, of course I was a little worried about the little hump on the spine but didn't really notice that. Um, you could definitely make some fine shavings rather easily. Perfect blade shape for this kind of stuff. And I was able to get a lot of force into the wood as well. So nice and comfortable, no hot spots at least for me. And like I said I could have done this for you know another 30 minutes or so. But <clears throat> now, can you, like I was saying earlier, you can use that tip to drag through the material, you know, pretty easily. You know, I, I prefer my tip to be, you know, at the center of the pivot or lower. But as you can see, I can still get that tip down on it. Uh, you have just the right amount of belly to be able to cut on the flat surface easily. It's going through all this very, very fast and efficient. I kind of use, I slow down when I get closer to the cutting board because I'm so scared that I'm going to catch that tip 
into my cutting board and snap it or something because I'm usually coming down with a good bit of force. But here's where I'm noticing that the, the knife has a decent bit of bite to it. Now, that's another thing that you don't see on many production knives usually. They might be sharp, but they over polished them and they just don't have bite. And when we get to when we're at this half inch sisal rope is where I really could tell it's biting into the material. And I can't stress enough, if you've never cut some some fibrous materials or thick materials with a thinly ground blade, you will be wowed by something like this that has a nice deep hollow grind and a sharp edge. You know, of course you want that sharp edge, but it just passes through the material so much better because the apex is probably a little thinner as well and there's nothing catching on the material that you're cutting. So it did excellent. Uh, I ran out of rope at I think 65 cuts and um, you know definitely could have done more than that but that's just all I had on me at the time. Definitely okay sliced uh, even better than the one before and you're gonna get even more edge retention than the M390 as well. So awesome upgrade very happy to see this one come out in a V2. Um, I have a few more that I would love some of them Warncliffe models. <laughs> all right. All right, let's test that edge after all that cutting. Yeah, I figured it would still be pretty good. I mean, it's not as clean as it was before, but I call that good. And if you want it to be better than that, sharpen it up, it'll jump way higher than it is now. Man, that S90V performs so, so nice. Especially after the first sharpening, it, is, it gets better and better each time you sharpen it. Let's take a look at the handle area. You have double-ended bolsters here, and that's this is another change from the V2 to V1. As you can see, the bolster is a little bit longer. The titanium bolster is a little bit longer. You have triple flutes instead of the single flute here. This one's also a little longer, and it has double flutes instead of the single flutes. Nice contouring on the scales you have chamfers going around the top and bottom of the bolsters giving it a nice clean classy look that beautiful nebula fat carbon cover i think it looks excellent you know just depends on if you like that color combo or not your hardware is polished titanium you have a t10 for the pivot t8 for the cover screws beautifully hafted back spring and scales as you can see tons of hand work goes into each one of these knives nice brush satin finish on the stainless steel back spring no high spots everything's perfectly mated blade centering is perfect on mine as well and let's take a look at the walk and talk i can pinch this open it, you just have enough blade to grab a hold to pull it out nice crisp half stop flush in the half stop position and just listen to this Woo, this one has a nice snap to it Flush in the open position as well. Nice, just listen. Oof. I could do that all day. Yeah, very, very nice. Mine feels like it has just ever so slightly a little bit more pop than the V1. Let's see. Yeah. Now, could be because I've opened and closed this one a lot more, but I'd like to believe that, you know, it's gotten even nicer. Comes with this beautiful leather slip. Knife fits great. Just flap it down. I, I usually go uh, tip up going into the sheath. Weight without the sheath is 2.684 ounces. With the sheath, it's 3.322. Quick side reference with the line steel round head and the traditional pocket knives Ohio River Jack. Next up, we have the Benchmade Proper and the Victorinox Pioneer. And lastly, with the Ontario Wrap Model 2 and the Civivi Elementum. Nitpicks complaints. The only nitpick I have on mine at all is uh, the edge bevel is pretty wavy. This is the first one I've ever gotten that wasn't, you know, almost perfect. But that's that's the only thing. It's, it's really just a nitpick for me because I'm going to sharpen this up right after this video since I've, uh, you know, tested this one. 
But other than that, you know, I don't think I need to say this, but these are some very, very high quality knives. Of course, they come with a premium price tag because you're getting premium materials. They're right at $300. And yes, I know that's out of a lot of people's uh, price ranges or what they'll spend on a slip joint. But if you're looking for an heirloom quality slip joint, in my opinion, Jack Wolf makes the best modern traditional slip joints on the market right now. Very close to uh, some custom slip joints that I've handled. And I think you'll definitely be happy with your purchase. They're gorgeous knives. They're super, super functional. They're ground to perform. You know, that's why, that's the main reason why I even carry a slip joint. Because I usually carry locking knives, but I, I like carrying a slip joint because they're ground a lot thinner than 99% of my production knives. So there you go. That'll do it for this one. Now, real quick, we'll go through my top five favorite Jack Wolf knives and... Lo and behold, this is one of them, so this will start it. The a Vampire. These are in no particular order, but these are the my top five favorites of right now. Next up, I got a nice little custom sheath off of Etsy with the little clip slip. And uh, right now, it's the uh, Jack Wolf Benny's Clip. I've always thought the Lanny's Clip Point was just one of the most stunning aesthetics on a knife. And, you know, with the, the Jack Wolf flair to it, it's just, ugh. so that's number two. Next three, I have the custom sheaths from Northwoods Leather Co. Love this stuff. Just got these not too long ago, and I can't wait till this one starts getting some patina. But number three, we have the Jack Wolf K9 Jack. I think it's that. If I mess it up, I'll put it right here. It's hard for me to remember everything. I love this one a lot because I love, love that blade shape. It's such a useful blade shape. Easily get that tip down on stuff. The handle's very comfortable. And man, I miss the micarta, but I get it. You know, not enough people were buying the micarta covers. But I love, love the micarta for a slip joint because my hands are already beat up and it's kind of hard for me to hold onto knives as it is. That's why micarta is one of my favorite materials because it's soft to the touch. It, it, it'll it get a patina on it, get darker, and it'll start looking really nice and vintage looking. And that's kind of how I want my slip joints to look. And they get nice and grippy. And when they're wet, they get grippier. So that's number three. Number four, another Northwoods, the black with the red. That's a sexy slip. What's in here? Oh yeah, thought it went well with the black canvas micarta on the Jack Wolf Midnight Jack. Ah, love this one. Such an excellent utility blade right there. Super slicey, look how thin that tip is. Love it, I wish you would do a V2 of this one. These three right here are in M390. Don't get me wrong, the M390 is excellent too, but I just love the aggression that the S90V takes whenever you sharpen it. Number five is probably my most carried Jack Wolf to date. If I tell by the slip, this is the same slip as this one. And you can see now besides the, the threading, of course, I love that raw blue, but they, they, they take such a nice patina and they start, they quickly form around the knife. And that's just from the sweat of my pockets. Look at that. Nice sheen. What's in this one? Jack Wolf Venom Jack. Woo, I love this one. Yeah. And then this one's super easy for me to manipulate. Yeah. This one I, I sharpened up. And I started to take it to a polish. But I didn't go full mirror polish. It's pretty close. Man, did it take a nice edge. This one's also an M390. The only one that's an S90 is this one. So there you go. I hope y'all enjoyed this. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute, absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.